Hello Internet! Today we're going to be looking at something I've been kind of putting off for a few months. Uh, in Unity 2017, they added a, the ability to test your code. Uh, so I have the uh, test runner here. Uh, that wasn't what I meant to do. <laughs> so if we pull up the test runner, close that. You can find it under the window uh, test runner. And that's just going to open up this nice little panel. I've been docking it here. Um, I haven't really played with this too much, so we're both going to be kind of learning here. I've read some of the docs, I have sort of a general idea and I'm kind of ready to dive in. Uh, so we'll kind of walk through it and do some basic stuff to just kind of test what we can use this for. There's two modes, sort of. <laughs> so the first one is going to be your edit mode tests. These are pretty much exactly the same as any unit test you'd write in any other framework. So if you've ever written like XUnit or Spock or any of those other tests, it's the same thing. Uh, and actually, I think it is using like XUnit behind the scenes. I'm not entirely sure on that, but we could check pretty easily. Uh, and then play mode tests are a little bit different. Those actually integrate into Unity's play mode. Uh, and so while you are playing, they can test. And so you can actually have a test that says over the next five frames, I expect this to happen things like that, which may be a little bit more, more complicated to test or more, more integration test style. That's what this gives you. I'm mostly interested in the edit mode tests because a lot of the things we build here deal with edit mode stuff or shaders, which this isn't going to help you with. Uh, so the way you get started is you just sit, create edit mode test. And then it does just like if you create a new script, it creates a script down there and we have to name it. So let's say, uh, te uh, test, test, that's not how you, how you would name that. I thought about all of this stuff, but I didn't think of what to name this file. <laughs> Let's just call it, uh, physics, uh, gravity physics test. That was a lot of work to come up with that. <laughs> uh, naming is hard. Anyway, so. This is going to come up in an editor folder. And actually, now that we've recompiled that script, you'll see we have assembly C sharp editor because it's a, it's a C sharp test. And then we have gravity physics, uh, physics test. You can have multiple tests in a single file. And so it's going to kind of group them like that. You can use that however you want. Uh, and so what we get is a list of two tests. It creates one for uh, play mode tests, which is going to be with the numerator and then a simple test, which is going to be the editor test. And so we can actually just run those this way. There's a right click and run option, which is going to run a subset of tests. So if I just wanted to run these gravity physics tests, that's how I would have done it. Alternatively, I can just hit run all and it runs all of them. So here we go. This is our gravity physics tests. You can kind of see it popping up over on the right and Visual Studio will ponder life and consider starting. It should have already been started, so I don't know exactly what's going on here, but it, okay. There we go. <laughs> so I, I installed ReSharper in Visual Studio 2017. It fixed some things. It also made Visual Studio start really slowly and I'm not sure what's causing that. It's taking like an additional 10 plus seconds sometimes, which is just crazy. Uh, so that's besides the point. Okay, behind the scenes, it's using NUnit. You can see or you can tell because we have NUnit included here. Pretty easy. Uh, so we get all the fun NUnit stuff. I'm not actually very familiar with NUnit, but that doesn't matter. All you need to do to test is use the assert class. And so this is going to have a whole bunch of static uh, methods. For example, you can say equals, and that's just going to test our two things equal. So obviously, if we want that to fail, I can say is true equal to false. Uh, and the way this works, uh, some tests, uh, some test frameworks flip these, but usually it's the expected value. So we're expecting true, and our result is the second value that can change uh, and everyone's going to kind of do it a little bit differently. But from my experience with XUnit, that's sort of how it goes. So if we run these now, it doesn't appear that they automatically run. 
I don't know if there's a way to turn that on. I haven't found one. But if we just click run all, it's going to quickly rerun our tests and we'll get an invalid operation exception. And it doesn't look like we get the actual results. So what I would expect is sort of to say false is not equal to true, which seems like it's obvious. But when you get into like comparing more more complex classes or just like comparing two strings, it it's nice to know what those values were. Maybe that actually happens with strings. So if I do say hello is equal to world. If I try that, maybe we'll get a little more information. It doesn't look like it. So we just get an exception. That's uh, not, I, I don't know, not too enthusiastic about that, but at, we get tests. So I guess that's, that's the bonus there. This other test is still passing though. This is sort of our play mode test. In order to actually get play mode tests to run in play mode, you have to have, uh, you have to enable play mode tests, which you just click this button. And then it requires restarting the editor. Uh, I don't really, we don't really need to bother with that <laughs> yet. So going a little bit deeper into this, tests are kind of layered in a number of fashions. There's usually the, the testing pyramid, which is just, if you've ever not seen a pyramid before, I don't know why you haven't, uh, but pyramid goes like this. And so at the very top, you have your functional tests. And functional tests are usually across dependencies. Uh, so say you need to call up to a web service that say stores high scores and you have a database for users and all of this other stuff. Your functional test is actually going to go and create a user in that database from your game and test that you created that user. An integration test is one step below that. So it's sort of in the middle of your pyramid. And so the idea of an integration test is to sort of do the same thing as that functional test, but instead of having a database, you're going to have that abstracted. You're going to mock that out. So you don't have an actual database. You just have a fake database that you wrote to, and then you tested that the command to write to the database was sent. You don't actually test that writing to the database happened. Uh, so it's it's just a level of the abstraction that kind of prevents you from needing that entire environment setup. So you can run these integration tests without actually having to set up a database. Then below that is where most of your tests should lie, and that's going to be your unit tests. And so what those are is sort of when you're writing a, your code, everything you do is sort of a, a unit of something. Everything does something. The idea of, uh, of unit tests is to make it and kind of separate out each of those things that you do in your code and actually identify those and put each of those individually under test. So the advantage of that is, let's say you have an inventory system. Your inventory system only allows you to carry 500 pounds. You can add any number of units or any number of items, but if your items go over 500 pounds or you exceed the number of slots in your inventory, you can't pick up the item. There's a number of things to test there. We have to test how many slots can you have. Uh, and if I change the number of slots, does that actually work? Uh, so if you maybe you pick up something that gives you additional inventory slots, does that actually work? Or did somebody hard code that in some weird place? That's an, that's an example. There's the, uh, the weight option. You have to kind of test each of those. And the idea of a unit test is to kind of separate those out. And so you can kind of put everything under test and without really having to do any manual work just by running tests you'll know oh we can't pick up more than 500 items regardless uh, and so the things like that are unit tests uh, it can it can vary but usually they're very very confined they're designed to be independent and they should run really quickly you should be able to get hundreds of unit tests to go in a second sort of <laughs> just testing by mass numbers. So this is probably the most basic we could write. There's nothing here. But as you saw when I was looking through IntelliSense here, there's a whole bunch of options here. Let's say you want your code to throw an exception. You can do that. 
you can just say, I think catch verifies that a delegate throws a, an exception when called and returns it. So this is actually going to verify that an exception is thrown when you invoke whatever message you're going to invoke. Uh, so it expects a delegate. So let's just test this and say, I want to throw a null pointer exception. Uh, I don't have any code here. So we have to kind of use basic C sharp stuff. So to do that, we're going to say new, uh, let's just create an array. <clears throat> and so this is just going to be our, why did I just call that an array? Whatever, doesn't matter. <laughs> we'll create a new int array that just has one element in it. Not really sure what the point of that is. Uh, and then we'll say, let's grab the second element out of that array. So when I call that, I'm expecting, uh, let's see, there's a whole bunch of things here that we can get. There's a delegate, another delegate, <laughs> one that is expecting a specific message. So you can actually test the exception message that gets thrown. I think what I want is there's a type of um, argument out of range exception. And I'm about 98% sure. Very, very specific, but not entirely sure um, that that's what's going to get thrown if I try to access something that is outside of the bounds. So our element, our array only has one element, but I'm accessing the second index. I, so actually, we need three elements for this to even work. So this should just explode in my face. But theoretically, the test should pass because we're catching this exception here and saying this test passes if an argument out of range exception is thrown. So if theoretically, if I wrote all of that correctly, I think we have an exception. So I don't really think this is going to work. Yep. <laughs> we need to do this question mark. Oh, duh. Uh, I need to actually set that. I need to make that a valid expression. Just indexing something in an array is not a valid expression. I should know that. That's like, whatever. Um, screwing up all over the place. But anyway, now that it, C Sharp doesn't hate us, or me, <laughs> we can go and run this. It will compile. And if I run this, it fails. Argument out of range exception. Oh, interesting. So this one actually is going to tell us what, what we got. So it's saying we got an, I was expecting an argument out of range, but I got an index out of range. Well, okay. Um, that's my bad. There's no, no actual issue there. I just used the wrong exception type because I'm good at my job apparently. <laughs> so if I rerun that, it passes. Uh, for some reason, the thing stayed around until I refreshed, but there we go. So now we have a passing test that is saying, hey, you can't access this thing that doesn't exist. Which, so this kind of stuff, it seems obvious, right? It seems like stuff that you would expect to happen. But when you're, especially when you're working with a team or if you're working on any project that is going to span multiple months, there's going to be things that you're going to build. And then you're going to come back to them three months later and you're going to have no idea what any of it does or why it works or how it works or anything about it. Uh, and this is sort of the easiest way to document that in a way where you can actually validate that your documentation is correct. Because what this test is doing is it's not just saying, oh yeah, we throw this index out of bound. It's setting a hard limit and saying, we can't go forward unless this code throws an index out of range exception. The important part about that is, is I can come back to this four months later and this will still be throwing that. I can come and change this code and maybe say this array now gets initialized to three. And if I do that, we're not going to get that exception anymore because I changed the definition of that array. And so now we don't get an uh, index out of range exception. We don't get any exception at all. That case doesn't exist, which may be good. And maybe that's what you wanted, but you may have code that depends on that or that was your expected thing. So in this case, we can just go and delete our test. We don't need it anymore. But 
in some cases you you're going to want to know that that changed uh especially in a team project when you have four people committing code at the same time it's it's hard to keep track of what everybody else is doing and how their stuff affects your stuff especially when this array initialization is happening in a different class than this uh set when you start just even just one class different especially bad if you're like three or four classes down the chain it, it just gets really hard to keep track of that and this makes sure that no matter how far down it goes this function is at least going to behave in this specific way which is just handy um so i guess that's sort of what i wanted to cover we'll get into the play mode tests a little bit later I want to figure out a little bit more about them and why I need to restart my editor anyway. Uh, so I think we'll probably use that to test like physics is actually working. I'm not entirely sure if that's a good idea, but that that's sort of what we'll do. But I will do that in another video. I'll try to keep this one short because this is more philosophy of test and just, hey, you can write n unit tests inside of Unity. So if you guys are playing around with this, I'd love to hear what you guys are using it for or if you've had any issues come up or anything that you would recommend but other than that that's it <laughs> so till next video see you internet